Hello, welcome to Midsummer's Music 30th Season Reimagined. My name is Allison Fleck and I'm Executive Director of Midsummer's Music. On behalf of the board, staff, and musicians, we are pleased that you are joining us for our 30th season. This summer, we present six programs online with several offerings weekly. All streamed events are free and we are thankful to our sponsors and donors for making that possible. Summers in Door County are about celebrating this area's strong Scandinavian heritage and the summer solstice, when daylight is so prolonged in contrast to the long winter nights. We offer programs that embody this joyous spirit and to spread it beyond the solstice throughout the entire year. Rather than celebrating a specific date, Midsummer's music celebrates a, uh, the spirit of the solstice uh, celebration with fine music and friendship in stunningly beautiful locations. Midsummer's music uh, has world-class artists. Uh, we continue our partnerships with local or organizations, including Woodwalk Gallery and Ride on Door County. The Midsummer's Music Quartet in Residence, the Griffin String Quartet, provides concerts, education, and outreach programs throughout the calendar year. This year, we have a reimagined season, which features a new set of programs that are highly diverse and inclusive featuring the works of five female composers, four composers of color, and a wide range of nationalities. Please visit our website and learn more about our musicians, sponsors, and various programs, including the 30th Anniversary Gala on October 10th. If you have questions, please comment on our Facebook or email us at midsummersmusic at gmail.com. We hope you enjoy today's program. Thanks again for joining us. Welcome to the Midsummer's Music Friends of Old Concert. I'm Norman Gilliland. We'd like to thank some people for helping to make this concert possible, and they include Dave and Nancy Borghese, and also Nancy Hauser and Jerry Randall. We'd also like to thank the Donald and Carol Kress Pavilion for the space in which these concerts take place. You can get complete program notes about this concert and others, by going to midsummersmusic.com and pressing on the virtual events button and there you will see complete program notes, all the background on the pieces that you'll be hearing. You're going to want to participate in the gala fundraising event that takes place on October 10th. It'll be hosted by Eric Lewis and will include 10 violins decorated by various Door County artists. And you can bid on those. You can also see them by going to midsummersmusic.com and pressing on the events button. You can also see them at various art galleries around Door County. And remember, you can make a tax deductible donation to Midsummer's Music by going to that same website, midsummersmusic.com. Anton Reicha was a friend and a direct contemporary of Beethoven. They were both born in 1770, and uh, the Czech-born Reicha eventually became a French citizen. Early on in life, he was not only a friend of Beethoven, but they may have actually shared rooms at one point. And that meant also a lot of shared conversations about music and innovation. Now, Reicha also was a mathematician, and that may well account for his interests in some things that were considered avant-garde in his time, and perhaps in our time as well in some cases, uh, such as polytonality and microtonal music and polyrhythmic music. All of those you can find in Reicha's music. However, uh, they uh, did not sell that well with his uh, audiences at the time. And speaking of selling, Reicha's reputation kind of evaporated after his death in 1836 because for some reason he resisted the publication of his music, uh, perhaps concerned about copyright piracy, which was a big problem in the early years of the 19th century. His reputation rests mainly on 25 wind quintets, but what we'll hear is going to be a quintet for strings and clarinet, so somewhat different among the works of Reicha. It consists of an opening allegro, and the second movement is a pastoral siciliano, followed by a minuet, and more about minuets later. And then there's also a lively finale, all of these providing an avenue for the clarinet to show off his virtuosity. 
it was a time when the clarinet was undergoing some improvements. I witnessed the works slightly earlier of Mozart for clarinet, and then at the same time, Carl Maria von Weber was writing music for clarinets as they improved and clarinetists became more virtuosic. You'll also hear though, in addition to the clarinet, an almost symphonic effect of those four string players. Our performers include Dan Juan, clarinet, David Perry and Ann Palin, violins, Sally Chisholm, viola, and Greg Sauer, cello. This is the Clarinet Quintet in F by Anton Reicha.
Hello, I'm Jared Santek, Artistic Director at Right on Door County. We're very happy to be able to continue our collaboration with Midsummer's Music to bring poetry to your concerts. Today, we're very happy to have with us Albert Di Genova. He is a poet who divides his time between Chicago and Sturgeon Bay. And Al has taken part in this collaboration every summer since it began. So we're very happy that he can be with us today. Please welcome Al Di Genova. Hello, everyone. I'm Albert Di Genova, and I want to thank Right on Door County and Midsummer Music for inviting me to uh, read this poem once again with the uh, ensemble. Uh, of course, it's it's much nicer to uh, be live and present with the musicians, but this is what we're doing this year, and I think it'll be I think it'll be wonderful. This poem is called In the Pandemic Spring. Um, this poem is actually by, by a slight uh, explanation. It's in a poetic form, and I'm not really a formalist poet, but sometimes I, I find myself falling into it. It's a villanelle cento, so it's a combination of two forms. So the poem itself is what's called a villanelle, which is a particular shape and rhyme pattern, but a cento um, is, a, is when you borrow lines from other writers or other um, pieces of uh, writing. And this is a Jack Carrow, Kerouac cento. And there's a couple of the repeating lines in here are from Kerouac's poem, San Francisco Blues, the 24th Chorus. In the pandemic spring, day black in the white windows, this city sings a spring of sad and gloom in the pain of pianos. Empty trains loud whistle blows, commuters stay home or venture armor clad, day black in the white windows. Crocuses slouch in April's cold, remembering what once we had, now gloom in the pain of pianos. Big eyes for the world and lips for the word, how long the magic carpet of mad, 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 day black in the white windows. To be or not to be, the impulse grows, seeing suns through grease-smeared touch pads, such gloom in the pain of pianos. Sheltered two-year-old wears a bunny nose, a quiet egg hunt with mom and dad, day black in the white windows, as gloom plays in the pained pianos. Thank you very much. Beethoven wrote only one string quintet among his many works. He did adapt two other works for string quintet. One was a wind octet and the other a trio. But this is his one and only original string quintet. And he based it, uh, at least in terms of his experience, on his string trios and his string quartets, which he wrote fairly early in life. This quintet he wrote in 1801, just as he was really making the transition from a composer to the composer of his time. It was the same year in which he wrote his second symphony and his third piano concerto. Uh, the Wind Quintet was a work that uh, Beethoven may have been aware of, but the string quintet was something that was much more uh, difficult for Beethoven to take on, at least at the time. This work consists of an allegro, an adagio, and then instead of the traditional minuet, such as you would have heard in the work, say, of Anton Reicha and his wind quintets, we have a scherzo. This is a time when the scherzo was replacing the minuet the minuet being that genteel dance movement that goes all the way back to the mid 18th century. By Beethoven's time, it was the livelier scherzo. It was a term that could mean almost anything. Originally, it meant a musical joke back in the time of Haydn, for example. It meant something that was uh, certainly light in tone. And by the time you got to Chopin, after Beethoven, it uh, 
just meant almost anything, but it did imply something lively indeed. And then even more lively, we have the vivace finale of this uh, string quintet. It's a work as uh, typical string quintets are for two violins, two violas, and cello. And uh, this particular work will be performed by our Midsummer's Music cadre of musicians, including David Perry and Ann Palin, violins. The violists will be Sally Chisholm and Alison Fleck, and the cellist, Greg Sauer. This is the string quintet in C by Beethoven. Thank you. 
And there you have the string quintet in C by Beethoven, the only string quintet that he wrote originally as a string quintet. Our performers were David Perry and Ann Palin violins. The violists were Sally Chisholm and Ellison Fleck, and the cellist was Greg Sauer. We'd like to thank Right on Door County and also poet Albert de Genova for their assistance with these concerts. And remember, you can make a tax-deductible donation to Midsummer's Music at midsummersmusic.com. I'm Norman Gilliland. Thanks again for joining us for this concert by Midsummer's Music. Well, hello. Uh, my name is Allison Fleck, Executive Director of Midsummer's Music, and it has been our pleasure to have Dan Juan for this final presentation for Midsummer's Music. Dan, thank you so much uh, for joining us for this really incredible piece by Rika. And I know that you're not um, new to Midsummer, so I wonder if you would just tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe how many years uh, you have been coming to Midsummer's. Sure. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, it's been uh, 
pretty slow summer until you call me and say, hey, we want to do this thing together. And how about a Rika quintet? And I was like, Rika quintet? The B flat? And she um, said, no, the other one. Oh, okay. And I was really excited that I got to play the other quintet, which no one ever plays, no client player ever plays. Um, anyway, I'm from Chicago. Um, I've been in Chicago for a while now, over 20 years. And then with uh, Midsummer's Music, this was my fifth summer. Well, that's great. And it was a very interesting piece and really great to hear it played on clarinet. Uh, the way you said it, uh, I'm wondering, should we tell people the other instrument who sometimes plays this piece? Yes. Um, so I think it's still not 100% determined which instrument Rika originally wrote it for, but the other one is oboe. But, you know, I think it sounds better on the clarinet. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> of course, of course. Now, um, I'm, I'm wondering about clarinet, and uh, I know that there are several kinds of clarinets. Uh, would you tell us a little bit about the instrument you played, maybe some of the instruments um, that you have in addition uh, to the instrument you played? Sure, sure. Uh, so for the Rika Quintet, I played exclusively on the B-flat clarinet, which is the most standard. Everyone who picks up a clarinet when they're fourth in fourth grade, it's a B-flat clarinet. Um, it, most pieces are written for B-flat clarinet, and then I also have an A clarinet, which is a little bit longer, a um, little bit darker, mellower sound, and um, it's used a lot by, um, uh, in orchestra setting. And then I also have a bass clarinet and then an E-flat clarinet. So bass clarinet, obviously, it obviously is a lot longer, heavier, therefore a lot lower. And then E flat clarinet is like a tiny little piece, um, goes really high up and it's, it's a screaming clarinet. So I own four clarinets. Wow. Okay. So I have <laughs> my indoor viola and I have my outdoor viola. Yay. <laughs> we both tune to A, so that's what I know. <laughs> if, if they tune to a B flat, I'm in trouble. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> well, for outdoors, I take my regular clarinet out and just keep my fingers crossed that it's not too cold. <laughs> yeah, isn't it funny that um, lots of times people think it's because of heat, but it's really cold. Um, that's so hard on these wooden instruments. They're just yes, yes. And humidity. Humidity is the other thing that we always have to pay attention Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Yes. So, um, you know, clarinet to me is a, a low maintenance instrument. But then I see all this fussing going around. You're always <laughs> something. You're you're swabbing, or you've got paper, or you're blowing. So what what's going on over there? <laughs> so well, we don't do it as much as oboe players do. <laughs> but basically, what's happening is you know during the concert when or whenever we play, we blow hot air into it, so it collects condensation inside the clarinet and bore is about, you know, that big and oboe is about that big. So oboe is a lot quicker to collect condensation. So they have to swap more frequently. Um, so if we don't swap, then the water starts to come out of the keyholes. And sometimes if you go to concerts or chamber music concerts or solo recitals, you hear um, the water clogging, clogging the hole and it kind of sounds like Mm -hmm. And we don't want that to happen. So every time I have a break for at least 15 seconds, I try to swap. And, you know, sometimes there's no break for five or six minutes, and I just keep my fingers crossed. And a lot of times, the worst thing happens where, you know, a lot of moisture is collected, and then water starts to come out. That's when I take out my paper, and then I try to... Um, um, dry out the water as quickly as possible. It absorbs the water. Yeah, that's a lot. And I, I'm sure that during a performance, it's got to be constantly on your mind that this is something to maintain. It's not just um, during a practice or during a rehearsal. This is constant evaluation. Right, right. And that's, that's part of the rehearsal practice is to mark my music and say like, 
swab in all caps. <laughs> That's cool. I didn't, I didn't ever think of that. I knew that a lot of things that you might have to mark would be breathing related, right? So you probably mm -hmm. have to mark often where's a good place to take a breath. But... Yeah, breathing, accidentals, you know, all the, all the usual on top of that when players, I mean, I don't know about other people, but I sometimes, you know, I have enough time to swap, but then I get so into the music and I'll listen to David Perry or, and, you know, the string players and I'm like, oh, there's some beautiful, oh, shoot, I forgot to swap, you know, <laughs> <laughs> That's so I have to mark it, yeah. I'm going to start paying attention to your music. <laughs> 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 well, I personally love chamber music and um, for, for a violist, um, my instrument, I, I feel like we're just so fortunate to have many, many pieces that we get to play. And I know that there's many pieces also for clarinet. And uh, I'm just wondering, do you have like a, a list of your favorites, maybe even your most favorite? What, what pieces have you enjoyed over time? Uh, getting to play with either other wind players or string players? Wow, that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, well, God. So I would say for, well, for chamber music, of course, Mozart clarinet quintet. Um, for clarinet and string quartet, the, we, the one we played, um, at WFMT last year. That's mm -hmm. one of my all time favorites. I also love, well, we, you know, clarinet players owe a lot to Mozart. And Mozart also wrote Kegelstadt Trio for viola, clarinet, and cantant, piano, you know? Yeah. So maybe yeah. sometime yeah. in the future we should play it. <laughs> um, though I would say those two are at the moment two of my top um, uh, favorite chamber pieces. Well, you picked some good ones for sure. And, and <laughs> it was great to hear you play the Rika. I mean, it sounded like you said it, it was, it sounded so great for clarinet and strings. Yeah, um, thank you. So uh, after uh, Midsummers, what, what's next for you? So we just finished our last uh, performance. What do you do now? Well, I'm back in Chicago and we just started rehearsing um, uh, with the Chicago Opera Theater. Um, we're going to have a virtual performance. Um, it'll be broadcast live and it's one of those where you pay for the ticket and, and it'll be available online for 24 hours. Um, that's coming up and it's called, um, I have the music, The Transformation of Jane Doe by Chicago composer Stacy Garrup. It's a wonderful piece. It's a um, um, uh, chamber opera, well, opera with chamber orchestra. It's almost like, no, it's a chamber group. String quartet, violin, viola, cello, and double bass, and flute and clarinet. And oh, flute doubles nice. on oh, alto sorry. flute. Yeah, and flute doubles on the alto flute, and then clarinet doubles on the bass clarinet. And we're, we've been sitting like really far away from each other, you know, uh, with the conductor. It's been challenging at times, but you know, Nothing beats uh, rehearsing and playing live music. I know it. It's been so great to um, be able to play with our colleagues again. It was a long break from getting to do that. So this was a real thrill for us this summer. And I'm so glad to hear that you have more coming up. And so people will need to um, follow you uh, and mm -hmm. see, see what you're up to next. So keep us posted on yes. uh, where you'll be and what you'll be doing, because we're very interested uh, when it's not that summer. Yeah. Most definitely. Um, I, I have an Instagram account. It's Dan Juan Clarinet. Uh, just at Dan Juan Clarinet. And I try to post a lot of things um, that are going on. Um, stories and posts and little clips of performances. So hope you follow me. Great. We'll make sure that people uh, are aware of that. And then uh, I wanted to... Uh, Okay, first of all, say thank you again for joining me today for some of these questions, getting to know you a little bit better. Uh, but this is the, the time where I like to have a little fun by asking the musicians rapid fire questions. Uh oh. <laughs> and, uh, the whole point of this is that you're not to know what I'm going to ask you in advance. So you just have to say the first thing that comes to your mind. 
And mm -hmm. I was thinking that maybe you guys were getting wise to me and where I was finding rapid fire questions. Not that you would have been looking those up or anything, but in case you were, I thought I'd change it up for you today. So you're- Oh uh, man. That's case on this one. I'm really bad at these. <laughs> Well, with your permission, maybe I'll help you out if you get stuck. So we'll see what happens. Please, yes. All right. Well, let's start off with something very simple. What is the first letter of your last name? W. From now yes. on. Yeah, you got it. You got it. So from now on, every answer has to start with a W. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What's something you can wear? White shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take it. That's not the first thing I thought of, but that's good. That's good. All right. Okay. Wait, what did you think of? I thought of a wig because I was thinking. Oh. Like, I was thinking like if I could change up my hairdo, what would I? You know, mm -hmm. so I was thinking wig. All right. Well, I haven't thought about that in a long time, so you know. <laughs> 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 yeah, you've got some area there to, to cut. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I could use a wig. <laughs> All right. This one I'll tell you. Um, I immediately went to something that would be later in the day. A drink that would start with W. White Claw. Hey, I've tried those. Those are good. I, was I know. I, I was skeptic. Huh? I'm sorry? Whiskey is what I was thinking. Oh, whiskey. It used to be whiskey, but then, you know, as I got older and older, whiskey turned into White Claw. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's good. It's very tasty. Yeah. yeah. All right. What about a place? Wisconsin. Good. All right. How about food? And you can't say white cheddar Cheetos. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say white rice. <laughs> um, you're going to laugh at this. Wonton. That's good. I was hoping you could say that. All right. What about an animal? Ooh. Um, what starts with the word? Ooh. You can say a whale. Whale. <laughs> Is, whale's an animal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. uh, profession. Um, who? Water boy. <laughs> I was going to say, how about a whale keeper? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Something in your home. Mm. Hopefully not a whale. Ah, um, God, this you made this tough by putting that W rule. Um, but we, <laughs> wait, no. Yeah, you. you I, I don't know. I was gonna say no. That doesn't work. Oh, um, water hose. <laughs> okay, here you go. A water hose. I'll, I'm going to let you off the hook here. You went through more than I had even planned oh. asking. <laughs> Good job. That was fun. Oh, my Thank God. You. <laughs> Thank you. That was I mean, I was going to say you are drinking water, but that's okay. And you have a picture of water mm -hmm. behind you. But Hey, maybe it's White Claw. <laughs> no, it's water. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it's over, you deserve it. So... Um, <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Thank you. I really appreciate your time. This was a lot of fun to get to know you a little better and to uh, put you on the spot there. Thanks for having me. And quickly before I go, my Zoom background picture, it, I took this uh, in Door County, actually, in North Bay, where I stay whenever I'm up there uh, with my host family, Mary and Jerry. And one day I woke up and it's just like, it was just so beautiful. I have to take the picture and it's a little tribute to my friends up there. That's great. And to Door County. I mean, it's, yes. it's so beautiful. I kind of have a hard time picking which one, but I think this one it's fits good. the occasion. Yeah. Very good. 
All right. Well, thanks again, and we'll see you next summer. Yes. Thanks for having me. Have a good one.